Welcome, in this video we're gonna go through the difference between the ARP and the MAC address tables. And so this video is a part of a much larger series with GNS3 Labs for the CCNA certification. So if that interests you, you should definitely check it out. The first thing we're gonna do is explain the MAC address table, its characteristics and how it's populated. And then we're gonna do the same for the ARP table. We're gonna go through its characteristics and explain how it's populated through the ARP process. And then we're gonna go out to GNS3, we're gonna create a topology and we're gonna test and we're gonna look at in real time how these tables are populated with basic topology in GNS3. All right, so first is MAC address table characteristics. The MAC address table exists exclusively on switches. Routers do not have a MAC table. And the basic function that the MAC table performs is layer one to layer two mappings. Layer one being the port. Layer two is the MAC address. And there's also a VLAN associated with the port in the MAC address table. All right, so the switching process is what populates the MAC table. The switch learns what MAC addresses are associated with what port by looking at the source MAC addresses in the frames as they pass through the ports. A little bit more on the switching process. When the switch receives a frame, it first looks at the MAC table. If it's in there, then it forwards it out that port. If the MAC is not in the MAC table, then it's gonna flood that frame out of all ports. And then when it receives that response, the MAC is then gonna be the source MAC. And at that point, it's then gonna put that MAC address into the MAC table. The MAC address table is also referred to as the CAM table. And the MAC table also does have an aging out function on its entries in the MAC table. All right, so now on to the ARP table characteristics. An ARP table is on any device that has an IP address. In fact, in order to have an IP address and participate in routing, it relies upon ARP. So all routed devices have ARP tables and it is required in order for them to function at layer three. And the main function of the ARP table is to map layer two addresses to layer three addresses, the layer two address being the MAC address and the layer three address being the IP address. So the ARP process is what populates the ARP table. The ARP process starts when it's looking for the destination MAC address in order to get to a specific IP address. So the first thing that a device does when it's trying to send traffic to a specific IP address is that it checks the table. If it's already in the table, then it forwards appropriately. If it's not in the table, then it broadcasts ARP looking for the MAC address for that specific IP address. Then the device that has the corresponding IP address will send a reply that has the MAC address in it. And at that point, it will populate the table. All right, and with that, we are now gonna go out to GNS3 and do a basic lab to demonstrate this. So what we're gonna do in this lab is I'm gonna drag on one switch and then I'm gonna drag on four of the virtual PCs. Then we're going to configure the access ports on the switch and assign IP addresses to the virtual PCs. And then at that point, we're going to start looking at the MAC and ARP tables. All right, now I'm gonna power everything on and then open up the consoles to everything. Okay, so now I have the console windows up for all of my devices and I'm just gonna start assigning IP addresses to the PCs. Oh, by the way, this is how you assign IP addresses to the PCs. You have the address, which is 10.0.0.1. Then you have the subnet mask, and then you have the default gateway. So these virtual PCs do have a question mark function that works a lot like the Cisco devices. So there I put in show with the question mark and then it shows me more options. So I can just do show IP. And it shows me the IP and it shows me that we have a slash 24 mask, which is what we put in. And it also shows the default gateway, which we also specified in that command. And it shows the Mac on the interface as well. All 
All right, so now real quick, we're gonna look at the configuration that I have for our layer three switch. I'm gonna change the host name to SW1. I am going to create VLAN 10, and then I'm gonna configure the first four ports for our switches to be access ports and assign them VLAN 10 as well. And then I'm going to assign an IP address to VLAN 10, because remember we have to have an IP address in order to perform ARP. No shut the interface for VLAN 10. Oh, and by the way, I do like to do abbreviated commands. So if you don't know what those are, let me just explain real quick. So in order to look at the Mac address table, all I would really have to put in is show Mac and then AD because that's enough to make it a unique command. But you can hit tab right there to have the full command of show Mac table. I suppose the full command would be show like that. And you can see right now that it's empty. All right, so I'm just doing a show IP in brief to show that because these are switch ports, these are in the up state. And we also have our IP address on VLAN 10, which is also in the up state. All right, so then as a next step, I'm actually gonna ping the IP address that's on PC1. All right, so you see right there where we have the period and then four exclamation points. The exclamation points mean that it succeeded. And it didn't succeed on the first one just because it basically had to go through the ARP process in order to know where it was and then complete the ping. And then we'll see it now has one entry in the MAC table, and it also has two entries in the ARP table. And the second entry is just gonna be an entry for its own IP address on VLAN 10. And you can see that it does not have an age because it's never gonna age out simply because it's always existing on that device. And then these virtual PCs also have ARP tables. And you can see that it has the MAC address for this IP address as well. And you can see that MAC address matches what the switch has for itself here. So if you look here, now the format they have it is a little bit different, but you can see that those match and that's what you wanna see. Another thing to note about the PC1 ARP table here is that it does have an expiration in 27 seconds. So one thing I've noticed about these PCs is, is that it has a pretty short timer to time out the ARP table. And now, even though it's only been a little bit of time since I did this, the ARP table is now empty because that entry aged out. So that's interesting. So it actually didn't repopulate after the initial one on the PC until I pinged from the PC to the IP address that's on the interface for VLAN 10. All right, so next we'll ping the second IP address for PC2 and then the same thing where we had the one failure and then the four successes. Look at the MAC address table. So now we have two entries in there and then we'll do the ARP table. And now we have three addresses in there. And so let's just ping all of the PCs. And then real quick, we'll just look at the MAC address table. Now you can see we have four entries there. And then and then we have ARP entries for all of them as well. Now we'll look at the PC's ARP tables. That one's populated. All right, so all of them are populated. And again, so real quick, we'll look at the MAC address table. It has a VLAN in the first column since all of these ports are in VLAN 10. Um, it has the MAC addresses on those ports. 
and then it specifies the ports. And then the ARP table, it specifies the protocol, which is the IP protocol, the IP addresses, and it gives the age in minutes. We'll do that again and see if it updates. Yeah, so you can see how the first time we ran it, all the age, well, the first one was at one and then the rest of them had been in there less than a minute. Now you can see this one's been in two minutes and then one minute. And it gives us the MAC address. And then it looks at the interface, which is going to be the interface of VLAN 10. And that's going to be the interface that the switch used to learn about these entries, which is going to be the interface of VLAN 10. And so if we were doing this with a physical interface and we had an IP address assigned to that physical interface, then it would be the physical interface. And then real quick, we can use the show ARP detail command to look at a lot more detailed information about the specific ARP entries. Show ARP detail. So this will tell you exactly how much longer it's gonna be in there before it's purged and more information like that. All right, so that concludes this video. We looked at MAC address table characteristics. We talked about the process that switches use to populate that table. Then we looked at the ARP table characteristics and we described the ARP process that's used to populate that table. Then we went out to GNS3. We built a topology and looked at how the tables are populated in real time. If you found this helpful, please consider liking and subscribing and I'll see you in the next video.